Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Ask Aaron. A couple weeks ago, uh, I did not film because I did not speak. But some questions came in for a good friend of mine who did speak. Max. This week, there was a sewing machine on the Ask Aaron desk for multiple days. I also substitute taught uh, some Bible classes at Trinity Academy where my kids go to school. So we're a day and a half late on this. And you might be asking yourself, so what? So what? <clears throat> anyway, we got six questions for the last two weeks. So I'm going to ask these questions. And... Uh, We'll go from there. As always, these are my views, not the church's. I hope they agree. If you've got more comments, put them in the comments section. Continue the conversation down below. Hill City Hudson backslash media, Facebook, YouTube, or the app to watch any of our past messages. Here we go. Question number one. Can learning get us to heaven? I gave a message about how everybody's learning. Um, yeah. Learning can get us to heaven in the sense that we learn about who Jesus was and what he did and uh, what his life, death, and resurrection mean for us. And so as we learn that, um, we start to believe it. And when we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord and he died on the cross and he rose again, uh, that learning has gotten us to a point where uh, we put our faith in Jesus and we are saved. So, yes, learning can get us to heaven in that sense, but only in that sense. And again, um, uh, all of the disciples are, are clear when they write about this, that it's um, not the fact that we learned that gets us to heaven. It's the fact that Jesus died and we learned about it, that Jesus rose again and we learned about it. So, it's learning about what he did because he is the one who makes it possible for us to get to heaven. So if you want to really parse words here, can learning get us to heaven? No, Jesus' life, death, and resurrection got us to heaven. But can learning get us to heaven in the sense that we learn about that? Yes. It's kind of a 50-50. Yes and no, it's my favorite answer, right? Uh, is learning more important than actions in God's eyes? The answer to that is... Maybe. No, the answer is yes and no. Yes, uh, wisdom is more important than doing the right thing because you have to do the right thing for the right reason, right? As a Christian, we believe that we do the things that God commands us to do because we put our faith, hope, and trust in him. You can do all the right things for the wrong reasons, and it's not going to matter one bit, right? You can go to church for the wrong reasons, you can give money for the wrong reasons. You can sing worship songs for the wrong reasons. So in that sense, yes, wisdom, knowledge is more important as we learn about who Jesus is, as we learn about what Jesus calls us to do, as we learn about how he calls us to live. Um, those things are incredibly important. Uh, but so are actions. And you need to do things for the right reasons. And so when you do the right things for the right reasons, um, it's what's most important, right? That we demonstrate our faith, that our love is an action, that our faith is placed in someone. And so, um, again, this is a yes and no. It's it's just dependent on how you phrase things and, and what you mean by them, okay? Um, I'm going to jump back to uh, a week ago, or a week two weeks ago at this point, uh, when my friend Max spoke, uh, he spoke uh, about anxiety. He spoke about chasing after God instead of the world. And someone asked the question, how can I know if I'm chasing after God or chasing after the world? And I thought to myself, you know, I could answer this question, but why not go straight to the source? So uh, let's let's give Max a call and see what he's up to, shall we? We shall. 
how do we know if we are chasing after God or chasing after the world? We had talked, I had talked about a lot about chasing after God um, and not chasing after the things of this world. Now, I think where that question is going to come most into play is like, how do I know if the things I'm chasing after that feel like they are godly are as actually me chasing after God or if it's me chasing after the world? Because the world itself is all of these things that distract us from like moving towards God and moving towards him. I, it's not, it's not a crime to want to cook dinner or to eat food, right? Or to, to, to pursue food at, at, in, in, during our day, if you want to use the, those terms. Um, it is a crime to make, or it is a sin if we can, if we pursue food over what the other things God needs, right? Like gluttony, like if we're gluttonous over our food um, and over what we're eating, uh, that becomes a sin and is we're not chasing after God in that moment. But I think the big overall thing is, are you seeking God first in your relate, like as the first part, are you seeking God in your relationship or a relationship with God first and foremost in your life? It's as simple as that. Is the first thing that you're doing is with everything you do, like every, every step you take, every, every action you take, is this something God wants me to do? Or is this something God does not want me to do? Are you asking that question? Are you searching for that answer? Because if you're not searching for that answer, not searching for that question, then it's irrelevant. Max is cooking in more ways than one. Great job, Max. Excellent answer. Let's ask another question. Uh, should we have more grace for one another? After all, we're just learning, right? <laughs> I mean, the answer to that is yes, right? We deserve um, to treat other people or to be treated by other people the way that we would want to be treated, right? That's Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So yes, you should show your neighbor grace um, because they're learning. But here's the here's the the caveat to that. Grace is this strange thing that we all want to be shown and don't really love showing to other people. And we should show it to other people, but we should show it to other people when they make mistakes that aren't purposeful. When we show grace to other people because they're just learning, but really what they're doing is just trying to get away with something because, you know, oh, I'm immature or, oh, Jesus will forgive me anyway. Or like, no, those, those situations don't deserve grace. They deserve correction. They uh, deserve instruction. And even in situations where grace is, uh, you know, the thing that we should do, that doesn't mean that we abstain or, or you know, keep ourselves from showing correction. Yes, we're all learning, and we should have grace for each other as we learn, just as you do for a child as they learn their times tables or how to read. But that doesn't mean you don't then teach them the right answer in those times tables or the, the correct way to sound out a word phonetically so that they can, you know, learn how to read it. So yes, you should show one another grace in situations where people are trying their best and doing what they can and attempting to learn. And no, you should not show people grace when they're trying to take advantage of the system. And yes, you should show grace, but you should also continue to teach and correct because getting it right is what's, you know, most important as we follow Jesus. We want to constantly be learning and growing so that we get it right. And again, getting it right isn't what gets us into heaven, but we still want to get it right. Right? Right. All right. Next question. God doesn't seem to be using me for his will. Where did I go wrong? So many possibilities uh, to the to the answer for this question. But my first question would be, are you sure that the thing or the things that you're doing are within the will of God, right? Like, oh, 
uh, you know, God doesn't seem to be using me to uh, preach the gospel at work. Well, do you know the gospel? Have you read your Bible? Do you know the story of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection? Are you able to share about it because you're actually, um, you know, intelligent about it? If, if the answer to those questions is no, then that's where you went wrong. Um, are you sure that the things that you're wanting to do are within God's will? Uh, God wants me to raise money to uh, help, uh, you know, fill in the blank of some selfish cause. Well, no, of course God's not using you because you're not doing something that's inside the will of God. That's where you went wrong. So the first thing I would say is if you don't feel like God is using you for his will, you need to probably stop and ask yourself, what is God's will in this situation? And I don't think that it's that difficult to figure out. God's will for us is that we use the gifts and the talents and the abilities that he's given us to further his kingdom. So are you attempting to further God's kingdom or are you attempting to further your own or someone else's? Um, the second thing is, are you trying to, to gain attention or are you trying to serve, right? Because all sorts of people try to gain attention when they should be serving. And, um, you know, oh, look at me serve, look at me serve. Well, that's that's not how that works either. Um, there are so many people at Hill City that make things, you know, behind the scenes go more smoothly, that don't get their name, uh, you know, on the website or, or, or you know, the credit every Sunday. Um, but those, those people make our church happen. And without them, I would just be some guy standing in an empty gymnasium talking to whoever bothered to show up, right? So ask yourself, am I doing things that are inside of God's will, which means am I trying to use the gifts and abilities he's given me to further his kingdom? Or am I more concerned about myself, my own attention, etc., etc.? And then, you know... There's also this issue of God's timing. Maybe the thing that you're doing is good and, and godly, but this isn't the time or the situation in which God wants to use you. So have you prayed about it? Have you asked him, is this something you want me to do? And am I doing it for the right reasons? Those are those are sort of the, the checklist items I would go down as we're doing this, okay? One more question. Let's go back to the kitchen. And ask Max, is anxiety a sin? Yeah, he said he was going to splice me in. It's a really old term. Uh, people don't normally say that anymore. You know, Aaron's old. So we've got that going for us. Uh, I'm cooking ribs tonight. Yum. Isn't that great? Uh, but the first question that uh, he had brought up to me um because my I had referenced uh, some scripture in math in uh, the book of Matthew, and it said the question was, "Is anxiety a sin?" And it referenced the the scripture in Matthew that I had said, where it says, "Do not be anxious." Uh, this is Matthew chapter six, verse twenty five, verses twenty five through thirty four, and it says this: "Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life." what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body. Uh, you will put, uh, you will put on, it is not, is not life more than food? Is the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. And yet their your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to the span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies in the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more, much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day it is own in its own trouble. 
Now, I don't think Christ, when he's talking about this, is actually saying that anxiety is sin. I think part of anxiety comes from our want or our um, perceived need to have these things in our life. Um, so I would, so to answer the question, I would say that anxiety is more of a, a product of sin rather than sin itself. Uh, sort of like how um, when we think about disease and, and things like that, they're a product of the sin of this earth and not of, they're not sin itself, right? It's not a sin to have cancer or a sin to have, um, you know, uh, some sort of disease. It's, it's, a, it's a product of this broken, this fallen world. And much like that, anxiety is just a product of sin. Now, it could be a product of our own sin, right? Like I would say, like uh, doing something that you shouldn't do, and then all of a sudden you procrastinate um, on, a sub, on something, and then you become stressed about it, and then that makes you anxious. Anxiety is not the sin, right? The, the procrastination or putting off the things that you should be doing causes the anxiety, the sin is like the, is the procrastination, the, the, the doing the thing that you shouldn't be doing that causes the anxiety. Now, um, when we look at, so if we look at anxiety in, in that way, anxiety is not necessarily sin. Now, Christ is telling us not to be anxious because he is taking care of that stuff for us. But, you know, anxiety is still a thing that we all struggle with. Enjoy your Ask Aaron. Bye. Wow, Max, whatever it is you're cooking up. Oh, that's right. You said it was ribs. I'm very excited. I hope they tasted delicious. Uh, as always, I want to thank you for filling in for me a couple weeks ago. I want to thank all of you for asking Aaron. You can continue the conversation, Facebook, YouTube, or the app. Uh, hillcityhudson.org backslash media for all of our services, past, present, and future. Um, join us in person. We just kicked off all of our fall stuff. You can join a small group. Um, you can be a part of volunteering at Hill City. All sorts of great stuff. Make sure you're joining us in person. 403 St. Croix Street, downtown Hudson. As always, thanks for asking, Aaron. We'll talk to you next time.